Now, we're gonna talk first about the nervous system in real detail. Now, there are two parts of the nervous system, the central nervous system, or the CNS, which is the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which is all the other nerves that then carry the information to the central nervous system and then back out again. In order to carry information in and out uh, around the nervous system, we use special cells called neurons. Now, neurons carry these electrical impulses at rapid speeds around the body, up to sometimes 100 meters per second in order to take these messages to and from uh, receptors and effectors. Now, there's three different types of neurons you need to know about. The sensory neurons, the relay neurons, and the motor neurons. Now the clues here in the name as to what their function is, sensory neurons are to do with sensing. So these pick up the information from the receptors and they carry the signal into your central nervous system. The relay neurons are just inside your central nervous system and they act like a little relay to coordinate what's going on. They might pass the signal around a few times and make different connections in your brain or your spinal cord. But they will at some point send a signal back out down the motor neuron, motor meaning movement, because this is the thing, this is the neuron that's going to end up causing the effect by sending a message to an effector, either a muscle or a gland. There are tiny little microscopic gaps between all the different nerve cells, uh, all the different neurons where they join, and we call these little gaps synapses. So a synapse is a connection between two neurons. At that point, uh, when you get to the end of one neuron, the electrical impulse stops but it stimulates the release of tiny little neurotransmitter chemicals and these diffuse across the gap and they bind to receptor on the other, um, on the membrane on the next cell and that triggers the next impulse to fire. So it's like a little junction there between the two neurons. Now lots of responses are coordinated by the brain. So what that means is that, you know, you think, oh, that's, uh, I'm gonna pick up my cup of tea pick up your tea, drink your tea. They're not something you've thought about as a voluntary response, it's something you've decided to do. But there are some things you don't want to have to think about, you want them to happen automatically, and we call these reflexes. And the reason you want them to be automatic is you want them to be rapid, you want them to be fast and quick, and you don't want to have to think about them because actually these things are usually um, dangerous that you're responding to. So these are things that are gonna prevent you, reflexes are gonna prevent you from getting injuries and hopefully gonna keep you alive. For example, might be something like the iris reflex. Now that's the part of the eye, the colour part of the eye, which can change uh, size um, and cause the pupil to either dilate or to constrict. And that happens automatically. If you shine a bright light in someone's eye, you'll see the iris constricting the pupil to be smaller. That happens automatically because it's protecting your eye from damage from too much light. Or let's say you touch something very hot. We've all done that thing where you touch something hot and you have to rapidly move your hand away. Now, what happens normally is the reflex happens first and then the pain or the thought of it happens after you go, ow, and that's because that's happened automatically. So you need to know how a typical reflex pathway works and we call that the reflex arc. So essentially what you have is you've got your stimulus, in this case, something hot, which you're touched with the finger there and there's receptor cells in the finger. So they pick up that information from the stimulus and they send the signal down a sensory neuron into the spinal cord. What you're seeing here is a cross section of the spinal cord, someone sort of sliced through there and you can see the signal coming in the back of the spinal cord down the sensory neuron. It passed into a relay neuron and then interestingly enough it goes straight back out of a motor neuron. The signal does not need to go to the brain at this point and that's why it is so much quicker because the brain is not involved. It just goes into the relay neuron and straight back out, down the motor neuron, down to the muscle, which will then cause the uh, muscle to contract and the finger will be lifted off the stimulus. So that is our reflex arc. And you should know the typical stimulus, receptor, coordinate, effector, response pathway and be able to give an example of that.